Hello, my friends, and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today we are mixing it up with mediums, and I'm going to show you several different techniques. This is what we did on Art Joyous Sharing with our live show, Thursday live show. If you haven't joined us there, be sure and check out that other channel. We do that each Thursday, 1030 Central. That's Chelsea and I. And we also have a Facebook group by the same name. If you're new to this channel and haven't heard about this before, check us out. We have a fun community and we share a lot of art and projects. We have themes for each month. And this month, it's all about different mediums. Last month, we did lettering. Um, you know, there's lots of different things that you can do in art. So what I'm doing here is I am creating some components from different papers, tissue paper, uh, bathroom tissue, uh, napkins from the kitchen, you know, any, any leftover stuff that you've pulled off the back of a decorative napkin, things from the dollar store, however you want to do it. So I've die cut these images and they're out of those tissue papers. If you want to see more about that, you can check out the live stream. Uh, this is just a fast replay of what we did in the live stream. But um, basically, you're compressing several layers of that thin paper and creating some texture. And then I'm adding color to those pieces. So um, the leaves on the left were cut from a napkin that had some color on it already. Uh, the goldfish was cut from a gold napkin, and the butterfly were cut from some white uh, tissue from the bathroom. So, you know, there's lots of things that you can do with these thin papers and use them up. So now that I've got these to this point, I want to seal these up a little bit. So I'm going to take my Versamark and just apply some Versamark ink, and I'm going to emboss them so that So, Shell and I were doing a number of different things uh, today. She was talking about gesso and gesso resist and all of that sort of thing. I have a couple of uh, resist techniques that I'm going to show you too. But first, I want to get these um, die cuts finished off. And so, on the butterfly, I decided to use a glaze uh, product. These are from Ranger and Tim Holtz. These are glaze embossing powders, so you can see through them. They're clear or translucent, and I have a number of different colors, and I want to um, add color to these different components. So the leaf, I'm going to dip in three different colors. There's a yellow, a red, and a green, uh, fossilized amber. I think the other one's crackling or something. I don't know what the green is because it's so dark I can't read the bottle. So anyway, I'm, I'm just going to dump some of that on there and then I'm going to rub it a little bit to distress it and blend those colors. I've got one little area that's popping up and yes, that uh, embossing powder will stick to glue. So um, there you can see I've got the powder on. I'm going to heat set that one and we're going to have a tricolor leaf from that original gold leaf. And you can see what that looks like. 
with the glaze on. And then I decided to use this uh, Kitsch Flamingo, which is a pink, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, I got a little frog in my throat today. Kitsch Flamingo for these butterflies. It's a pink tone and I'm trying to get my dauber, which is an embossing dauber, to uh, release enough of the fluid to coat my butterfly. It's not coming out real well and I don't want to fuss with it, so I just go back to my uh, Versamark pad eventually and use that because, uh, yeah, that dauber was not not cooperating with me today and that's that happens you know if we're doing a live show you can only do what you can do so get that pink flamingo on the butterfly and you'll see how the color still comes through even though I'm putting a pink glaze over the top so remember you want to hold on to these so that they're not flying all over your desktop uh, one butterfly wants to get away. <laughs> I'm going to heat set those. And uh, yeah, there's the butterflies. So, you know, napkins come typically in these cellophane packages. And so I didn't want to waste that. And I had these new stamps from Art Foamies. So what I did is I took... Uh, the art for me stamp and used a stays on ink because that will attach itself to anything any smooth surface uh, non-porous surface you can stamp with stays on and so I stamp some images and those can be used in my collage work in my journal on a card however you want to use it but don't waste those products that are part of the packaging they can all become part of what you're making so now I have this uh, heavy body paint from Golden. This is a quinacridone magenta. And I have these uh, pieces of deli paper that what I do is I, I just swish some color around on them. So I'm just demonstrating how you can just take a key card, whatever you've got, and just add some color to these deli papers or to your... Um, tissue paper, rice paper, whatever you've got that you want to use in your collage. This one is dry now. And so I'm going to water down the um, heavy body with my paintbrush because you want, you want this stuff to stay wet long enough to do your application. So I'm going to do a couple of different things here for resist. I'm going to put down this uh, magenta color over the green and then I'm going to spritz this. And I think my first application was just an alcohol spritz. And you can see I'm dropping some more onto the surface there to get more effects. But you can see the drops that are happening and how the green is coming up through the red. So now I've got another piece here. And I'm going to try another technique. And this one is using uh, soap. This is a spritz water bottle that has uh, like dishwashing soap with some water in it. And I'm going to spritz that on. And you can see this is what that looks like. And that's the alcohol one. So, you know, you can get different effects depending on what you're dropping into that wet paint. So... There's two different resists that are happening here on my desktop. And what do I do next? I'm just uh, continuing. And this time I'm going to use a dropper and I'm just going to drop some of that into that wet paint and see if I can get those effects. Now, it does depend on the paper that you're using. You want to use a paper that is you know, not real porous because you want to be able to move that paint as it sits wet on top of the surface. So these all have some kind of glazing on them. These deli papers have a little bit of a waxy surface to them. And so I thought it was a good paper to use. These tissue papers that I ordered, I think from Etsy, um, have printed material on them, but they also have kind of a waxy surface. 
So they're not real porous. They're not going to just suck that paint up and dry. Um, here's another one of those papers. And I'm going to use some of these art foamy stamps and some of that uh, stays on ink. And I thought I'd do a tone on tone, but the, the orange is too light. You can't see it on there. So I'm going to grab some uh, darker Chianti ink and just stamp this paper. So this is going to be the background. And I wanted to stamp it so that it had a little more texture to it. Uh, this is one thing that you can do with stamps and ink, which is another medium. And uh, paint is a medium, and all these things are mediums. But now I'm going to use something a little bit uh, outside the box. I'm going to grab some mastic, which is uh, chalk, uh, silicone, or uh, uh, what do they call that? Caulking. It's caulking. And you can get this like at the dollar twenty-five store, or you know, there's there's lots of places that you can get caulk pretty cheap at the hardware. Um, but I'm going to grab a couple of stencils out here because I'm going to do a few different techniques, and I want to have some stencils to use. And I've got a key card, and so here's a Tim Holtz. And I'm just spreading that caulking on the top of my stencil. And I'm going to take that key card. I'm going to spread it down through the stencil onto that painted deli paper. So we've got a couple different mediums going here, another technique going, and that's how we roll. We just continue to make components fodder for art, right? So um, I have a whole rolling cart, one of those Rascog carts that just full of all of these collage components. So I'm going to set that one aside to dry and then I'm going to come in with another non-standard uh, product. Um, if you want a little bit of color, rather than just using a white caulk, you can use wood fill. And I think mine is dried up. It's, you know, I've used it for other projects and out in the garage, filling holes, whatever. So I'm going to cut the end of that tube off and I'm going to reach down in there and try to get whatever remnants there are in there. Now this stuff is pretty well set up. It's gotten kind of tacky, kind of icky, and I'm just going to spread what I can out here to give you an idea of what the color looks like, what it looks like on a page. This normally would be a lot more fluid and right now it's kind of like putty. It's, it's turned into this putty type substance. If you like putty, that's okay. And so what do I do with the remainder of that putty? Well, I'm going to go get a mold because I'm thinking to myself, well, I don't want to waste the rest of this. I don't want to just toss it in the recycle bin. So I'm going to get a mold out. There's the finished uh, piece that's got to go aside to dry. And I'm looking through my stash. I First I thought, well, I'd, I'd squirt it on a piece of paper and I'd get a cookie cutter or something like that and cut out a shape because I can spread this kind of like you spread frosting, right? And I was just going to put it down, spread it around, get a cookie cutter, cut it out, and then, nope, nope, I decided to go a little bit differently with this. I went and found a mold because I had figured out that um, this could be shaped. So the mold I went with is from Prima Marketing. It's a Finnebear mold and it's got stars and moons and moon faces. And I just thought, oh, this would be a good one to use because, you know, you can always use a face someplace and put some seed beads or something around it and just, you know, have a good play with it. So I'm going to grab from my drawer. I look around, see what else I've got. And here's, here's my stencil. And I'm just putting a little bit of powder on it, uh, trying to keep stuff from sticking to the surface. Now they do have a product that you can get, which is a mold release. Um, yeah, I don't have any of that on hand. So I'm pulling that first little face off there and I'm trying to get these uh, other ones pushed into the mold. And you, you should let this stuff dry in the mold so it's easier to pop out. Um, I was in a hurry because we were in the middle of a show and so that one wasn't working and I thought, well, 
I'll try this other one, see if I can get it to pop out. And no, it wasn't ready, so I'm letting it dry. And just going to move on from there. And, you know, can't do everything in an hour and a half. So I'm just going to clean up my desk a little bit, get the bits and pieces off of there, and clean up my palette knife before that stuff gets stuck to it like a rock, because it will, and, and you'll need a chisel to get it out. And um, I'm going to show you what that tube looks like after it's been cut open and most of the stuff's been scooped out. There's not a lot remaining. <clears throat> and you can do this with your paints and other things, too, when you get down to the bottom of something. Uh, the small bottles of Golden, I save those because I have larger bottles and I refill the small ones. And then you can check on your paints and you can add some uh, medium to it, you know, if you need to loosen it up and just add some gel medium or something to it to loosen it or some water or whatever you need to do to preserve the life of those expensive paints that you don't want to go bad. So here's the uh, piece that I'd done with the caulk. It's just about dry. There's one of the ones that was done with alcohol. And I'm just lining things up because we're getting towards the end of our show. You can see the spritzed resist and how it has the kind of speckled layer. Here's the little butterflies and leaves. And I'm going to leave you with this thought that, um, you know, use up what you have. You don't have to go out and buy a bunch of things. You can look in the garage to see what you have. You can uh, look in your cupboard and pull out the things that you have the last little bits of and use them up so that, you know, you can create these things. These things are dry now and they can keep for a long period of time. But those other consumable products are not going to last forever in this way. So you want to think about that and about how old a product is and how long you've had it and whether you need to use it up or not. So I've got the goldfish die cut out now, and it's towards the end of the show. I'm just adding some of those different glaze colors to my fish, and I'm going to heat set that. And I think that's about the last thing that I do for the show today. So thanks for being with me, my friends. Um, I hope you like, share, subscribe, all the things that are important to YouTube and the channel so that the channel will grow and people will find it and I can help somebody else learn about all of these different media and what you can do to create collage components. I hope you enjoyed this. Remember to be kind, love one another, and have a great Mother's Day. Bye, everybody.